Abu Lu'lu'at al-Majusi is the name of a fire worshipper from Persia who worked for a companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name of al-Mughira ibn Shu'bah. Al-Mughira used to deduct four dirhams from Abu Lu'lu'a's wage every day. Grieved by his master's conduct, he approached Umar and he said, O leader of the believers, Al-Mughira is taking too much from me. Ask him to reduce it. Umar said to him, Fear Allah and be good to your master. Meanwhile, Umar intended to speak to Al-Mughira to ask him to reduce it and have mercy upon Abu Lu'lu'a. Abu Lu'lu'a, however, became engulfed in fury and he said, The justice of Umar extends to everyone except me. And so Abu Lu'lu'a al-Majusi entered the masjid and he hid behind one of the pillars concealing within his cloak a poison double-edged dagger. Amr ibn Maymun witnessed the scene and he described it by saying, On the day that Umar was stabbed, I was standing and there was nobody between me and him except Abdullah ibn Abbas. Whenever Umar passed between the two rows, he would say, Stand in straight lines. When he saw no defect in the rows, he went forward and started the prayer with takbir, i.e. by saying Allahu Akbar. He used to recite Surah Yusuf or Surah An-Nahl or their likes in the first unit of prayer so that those who would arrive late had time to join the prayer. Immediately after he said the takbir, I heard Umar proclaim, the dog has eaten me as the murderer stabbed him. Abu Lu'lu'a mercilessly thrust the poison dagger into Umar's body multiple times after which he turned his attention to the congregation, stabbing indiscriminately the criminal wounded 13 unarmed companions seven fatally. His murderous rampage was finally stopped by a companion who threw a cloak over him and Abu Lu'lu realized he had no escape and he ended his own life. Those who were standing by the side of Omar saw what I saw, Amr ibn Maymun, he said. But the people who were in the other parts of the masjid did not see anything. They could no longer hear the voice of Omar and were saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf led the people with a short prayer. When he finished, Omar, he said, O oh, ibn Abbas, find out who attacked me. Ibn Abbas inquired and eventually came back to Umar and said it was the slave of Al-Mughira, i.e. Abu Lu'lu'a. Umar said the craftsman. Ibn Abbas said yes. Umar said may Allah curse him. I treated him kindly. But Alhamdulillah that my death came not at the hands of a man who claims to be a Muslim. Amr ibn Maymun he continued saying Umar was then carried to his house and we went along with him. The people were as if they had never suffered a calamity before this one. Some were saying it's going to be okay. While others they said we fear for his life. A drink infused with dates was brought to him and he drank it, but alas, the drink flowed from his cut, open belly. Milk was then brought to him and he drank it, and in a similar way it flowed out from his wound. At this moment, the people realized that he would die. People flocked to the bedside of Omar and others began to praise him. One particular young man approached him and said, O leader of the believers, I give you good news from Allah for your close companionship of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for your superiority in Islam that you know of. You became the caliph, you ruled with justice and finally you have been martyred. Omar replied, Laytani ibn akhi wa dhalika kafafan la alayya wa lali. I wish that all of these things which you mention will offset my sins, causing me no loss or gain in the end. When the young man turned to leave, his clothes seemed to be touching the ground. Omar said, call the young man back to me please. And when he returned, Omar said, Ya ibn akhi, irfa' thawbak, fa innahu abqa li thawbika wa atqa li rabbik. Oh brother, lift your clothes from the ground, for this will be better for your clothes, and this will be more pious. Allahu Akbar. Think about how Omar at this moment is hemorrhaging, how the ummah was about to bid farewell to its caliph. Anxiety had reached its peak, and yet despite the magnitude of these circumstances, Omar was still concerned with this young man's lengthy garment and found the energy to advise him. This is the nature of a Muslim, a lantern of light at all times. Wherever he or she finds himself, herself, and whatever the scenario may be, they continue to enjoin good to forbid evil without belittling the reward of any potential advice. Omar then fixed his thoughts on his grave and the place of his burial. He turned to his son Abdullah and said to him, انطلق إلى عائشة أم المؤمنين فقل يقرأ عليك عمر السلام ولا تقول أمير المؤمنين فإني لست اليوم للمؤمنين أميرا وقل يستأذن عمر أن يدفن مع صاحبيه Go to Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mother of the believers and say to her, Umar gives you salam but do not say Umar the leader of the believers because today I am no longer the leader of the believers. Say to her, Umar ibn al-Khattab
Khattab asks you for permission to be buried alongside his two friends. Here he was referring to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr, both of whom were buried within the apartment of Aisha. Imagine breathing your last few breaths knowing the soil will be your home in a few moments. Most would be in a sheer state of panic due to the turbulence of death. Ponder, however, at the steadfastness of Omar as he, during his dying moments, arranged his own funeral. Abdullah greeted our mother Aisha and asked for permission to enter. After being granted it, he entered and he found her sitting and heavily weeping. He said to her, Umar ibn Khattab gives you salam and he asks if you will give him permission to be buried alongside his two friends. Our mother Aisha responded, Kuntu uriduhu li nafsi wa la bihi liyawma ala nafsi. I had reserved this spot for my own grave. However, I will prefer Umar over myself today. When Abdullah returned, it was said to Umar, Abdullah has come back. Umar said, help me sit up. So Umar was propped up and turning to Abdullah, he asked him, what news do you have? Clearly, this was something that was bothering Umar and it was on his mind. He said, O oh, leader of the believers, it is as you wish. She has given permission. Umar, he said, Alhamdulillah, there was nothing more important to me than this. Amr ibn Maymun, the narrator of this incident, said in other reports, سَمِعْتُهُ لَمَّا طُعِنَ يَقُولْ وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قَدْرًا مَقْدُورًا The moment Umar was stabbed, I heard him recite the verse from the Qur'an, and the command of Allah is a certain destiny. As Umar's final hour approached, signs of agony began to appear on him. Abdullah ibn Abbas tried to relieve some of his suffering by saying to him, O leader of the believers, never mind what has happened to you. You were a companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and were an excellent companion. And you parted with him while he was pleased with you. Then you were the companion of Abu Bakr and were an excellent companion. And you parted with him while he was pleased with you. Then you were the companion of the Muslims. And you were an excellent companion to them. And if you leave them, you will leave them while they are pleased with you. Omar's response, however, took Abdullah ibn Abbas by surprise. It delineated the God-fearing nature of Omar that remained until his very final breath. Omar, he said, as for what you have mentioned about my companionship to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and their happiness with me, then this is a favor from Allah upon me. As for my grieving which you see in me at this moment, it is over you and your companions. Omar's grief had transcended beyond his wounds and his injuries. He was anxious over the welfare of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after his departure. Umar concluded with the following, Wallahi, law anna li tila' al-ardi dhahaban, laftadaytu bihi min athabi allahi qabla an ara. I swear by Allah, if I possessed gold equal to the earth in size, I would have ransomed myself with it from the punishment of Allah before I meet him. Reflect on who it is who is uttering these words. Not a disbeliever who had disregarded his purpose of creation. Not a criminal who had spent his life pursuing sins. Not an average Muslim who had fallen short of the very basics of Islam, ignoring and delaying all advice that he or she had received. This was Umar, the one guaranteed paradise on numerous occasions by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. This is Umar. His palace in paradise was mentioned to him by the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. He had entered into the very dream of the messenger on numerous occasions. He was promised martyrdom by the messenger and was granted it as he was leading the believers in prayer. It was his weeping that could be heard by the Muslims at the very back of the masjid as he stood at the front leading them in prayer. It was he who scarcely slept by day, not wanting to neglect the rights of the Muslims and who barely slept by night, not wanting to neglect the right of Allah. He accompanied the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fought alongside him above the soil and was eventually reunited with him once again again as he was lowered beneath the soil in Aisha's room. If these were the final words of Omar, then what are we to say? His son, Abdullah, describes the moment when his father came to utter his final sentence from this world. And he said, My father's head was resting on my thigh during his final moment. He said to me, Place my head on the ground. I said to him, What is the difference between my thigh and the ground, O father? He insisted, and he said, Place it on the ground. And so I lowered his head until it rested on the ground, i.e. wishing to be viewed by his Lord with mercy. Then I heard him repeat to himself, Waili wa wailu ummi illam yarham. Rabbi. Woe to me and woe to my mother if my Lord does not show mercy to me. And he kept repeating these words until he breathed his last.